Boom. We live streaming. Talking game. It's your host. Uh, and it's in the flesh. Some call yeah. me Tony. Some call me LT. Some call me Yellow Tape King. Some call me Anthony. Whatever you call me, let me know what I was on when you was fucking with me. And we got cuz. Cuz is back. What up, cuz? Depending on when you met me, I was <laughs> probably giving you easy but, buckets. Getting buckets. Um, sorry for the hiatus. Basketball season was just, hey, man, it was another thing. But without further ado, I am back. I'm in the flesh. We're going to be giving you guys more of what you love live and in person. Shout hey. out to the Tar Heels. We're going to the title game. Fuck Duke. Um, I, I I grew a hate for Tennessee throughout the year because they kept trying to give Tennessee our number one seed, even though we beat them. So fuck Tennessee, yeah, get them up sure. out of here. For sure. And uh, looks like we gonna lock it up tomorrow. I think we beat Virginia or NC State. Yeah, neither one of them have uh, anything to match up with us. So, um. I look, I look for the uh, clean sweep. Uh, obviously, that ugly shade of blue couldn't hold they end of the bargain. I guess they didn't want to get whooped three times, so you know that would have been so sweet. We'll, we'll take care of it. You know, you never root for Duke, right? Like I know me, I'll root for Duke just to see them and beat them. It's never a time where you want Duke to win, right? Never, even if it like hey, because like I always say. If Duke is our last hope for the ACC to make a Final Four run or to win the title, God damn it, the ACC just didn't deserve it this year. I never root for Duke, even for them to get to us, for us to beat them. I still want them to lose, always. Big I'm Duke hater right here. I'm not mad at that. Fuck Duke. But I want to talk a little NBA tonight. Um. We had our predictions um, before the season started. And uh, in the East, our top three was pretty pretty decent looking at it. Um, I had Bucks, Celtics, Cavs. That's the top three right now. Okay. Um, Celtics is one. I had Bucks being number one. Okay. Um, I underestimated the Porzingis signing. Okay. A lot of us did. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about it, you add somebody 21 and 10, and then what? You upgrade Drew Holiday's better than Marcus Smart, right? Absolutely. We, Absolutely. We definitely, I think I think that was a situation we were just trying to nitpick and find a reason not to put the self as number one. Because when you think about it now in hindsight, it's inevitable for them to be where they're at, right? Yeah, it was, it was absolutely. Um, no reason or no excuse for us not to have them number one. Um, we are we were prisoners at the moment. We got caught up by the transactions instead of um, not even looking at the fact that the Bucks got to figure it out. Whereas Porzingis and Holiday are pickups that you can plug and play because they don't necessarily need to dominate the ball. Yeah, and we underestimated that fact. Yeah, and Drew Holiday and Marcus Smart pretty much are the same type of player, but, you know, we'd be bullshitting. We'd be calling people the great value version. Marcus Smart was the great value version of Drew Holiday. Absolutely, because <laughs> Marcus Smart, in his twisted-ass mind, he actually felt like he should have been taking the shots that Brian and Tatum were taking. And I think Drew Holiday has played with stars. You know, he's he's played with AD out there in um, New Orleans. And, you know, he played with Giannis. So he knows his role. He knows his limitations. He doesn't go out there and try to do more than, than what he's capable of. So that he goes the long way. I forgot he was in New Orleans with AD. Absolutely. We I mean, try to let you know that AD didn't do shit. But mm -hmm. that's another story for another day, cause we we could get to that story once we start talking more about the West. Cause uh, AD, you got to talk about the ownership this European got over you. Yeah, I don't understand that. It's ridiculous. 
But then I had this is where it gets interesting. I had Sixers, Knicks, Hawks, Nets. And right now you got Knicks, Magic. Shout out to the Magic. Pacers, who I didn't even have in the top 10. And then the Sixers, who are free falling. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think free fall would be an understatement. Um, Joel Embiid, damn, takes MVP to another level, right? Mm. Yeah, he's showing more value now, not playing than he was while he was on the court, for sure. Very true. Very for true. Sure. You bring Joel Embiid back if you the Sixers? Uh, I mean, me personally, no. Um, but you kind of got to the save face because if you don't, you're in danger of not even making the playoffs at all at this point. Yeah. Um, so you probably got to bring them back. Um, probably I, I don't see the benefit in it. I don't see them going anywhere. Once again, they won't get past the second round. They I, in a seven game series, even with a healthy NB, they don't yeah, beat the Knicks. They don't beat the Cavs. They don't beat the Bucks, nor the Celtics. So, and I don't even think they can beat Miami. Okay. You don't think so? No, I don't know. Even man. with a healthy NB. Miami interesting. Right now, the play-in would be the final three teams are the Heat, Bulls, and Hawks. So the play-in would be the Sixers, Heat for that 7-8. And you have the Bulls and the Hawks for that 9-10, which will, you know, eventually battle out for that eight spot. Um, I don't know. You bring B back for one game healthy. He might beat the Heat. I don't think he can beat the Heat. Can nope. he beat them? He can he beat them other two bums? Yeah, Bulls and Hawks. He can beat them. I don't <laughs> think he can beat the Heat because one thing we're gonna stop doing, and everybody out there, you're gonna stop underestimating the power of playoff Jimmy. That's what we're gonna stop doing. Jimmy Butler definitely. It's crazy how he's a totally different person. Yeah. So like. <laughs> He's, he's a he's a total he turns into a top five player in the NBA in the playoffs. Right. And he doesn't care about the regular season. Um he don't care about my parlay. You know, he, <laughs> he gives no fuck about your parlay good. He just he's just out there and um he know what they bought him there for. And it's for April, May, and June. And yeah. you know. He didn't. He didn't get you there to be in the All Star game. Yeah, get get Bam to do it. Get Bam to do that. Let the young boy do that. Get, get Bam to do it. I don't know, man. I. It's just what we were seeing from Embiid before he got hurt. It makes things scary, you know. Especially if they can win like the first playing game and get that seven spot, and let's say they match up with the Bucks because Boston so far ahead is almost it's foregone their number one. Number one, without, without no, question. You. But if the Sixers was to find a way to get the Bucks backing into the playoffs, that can get interesting real fast. It could, but my biggest thing is Joel Embiid's conditioning. Um, this is without, true. without a doubt, he's a top five to ten player in the league when healthy. But his conditioning, even when healthy, has always been an issue. And then when you get in the playoffs, those 29 to 33 minutes that he's playing has to turn into those 38 to 42 minutes. And with him being out this long, I just don't see. You know he's been eating Chick-fil-A. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chick-fil-A, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, all kind of bullshit. And I, I just don't believe in it like I can't drink the Kool-Aid, even with a healthy NB. Six is out of here. Um, Daryl Morey needs to be fine. That's the one thing I do um, wonder is, like, when are people going to start realizing that Daryl Morey, Morey is not a good GM? No. Like, he caught James Harden in his wave, and he rode that to prominence. James Harden mm -hmm. made a lot of people look good. Clint Capella got mm -hmm. a lot of money. Because of James Harden, Clint Capella's still doing his thing, though. Yeah, that's true. 
That's still doing his thing. Yeah, he but he wouldn't have got as much money if it weren't for James Harden. Definitely wouldn't have got no max deal, but uh, oh, but yeah, Jerry Morley, a lot of blunders. Um, he fucked up the Ben Simmons situation. Um, I feel like he definitely could have got more for James Harden than what he got. And um, he's never, I mean, what his claim to fame is what Chris Paul tearing his hamstring being a game away. Yeah. That's like the closest he ever like built the team to a chip. Uh, closest he ever, well, what were they, Chris Paul was, he was he on that team. They came back from 3-1 on the Clippers and got to the West. Well, he wasn't on that team, right? That was Dwight Howard, right? Yeah, that was Dwight Howard. Okay, so, I mean, that that team was pretty good. They got to the Western Conference Finals, but I don't think anybody was going to beat that juggernaut Warriors team at that point. But, I mean, still had South to them. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. Um. What you had in the East? What was your at 10? Uh, so my 10, it looks to be, let me uh, put mine up. So in the East, I had Bucks, number one, Celtics, number two, Cavs is number three. I Don't you have the updated version right there? Yes, I do. And you, we had the same three. So you, uh, only difference is your Bucks and Celtics. It just flipped okay. those. Obviously, I ran with that Bucks. Uh, not really doing my homework, just going off of you got Giannis, you got Dame. And, yeah. you know, I, I, again, as I stated earlier, didn't take into account that the jail and that it has to do. You got two alpha males trying to figure it out. Um, I don't think I took that into consideration. Um, four, five, six. I had Heat, Heat four, six is five, Knicks six. Um, what are we? What are we looking like there? Knicks are four, Magic five, Pacers are six. Okay, so um, definitely didn't account for the Pacers. Nor the Magic. Shout out. I actually I had the magic in my top team. I was gonna get to them, but I didn't have them. I didn't have them up there that far. I definitely seen the magic uh, with Paulo. I seen them as a play in team. Yeah. Um, you know, but definitely, uh, you know, the the Knicks are playing good ball. Um, as we said, the Sixers in the free fall. Um, that curveball was definitely the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton is him. Um, Benedict Matherin, he, you know, made great strides. Uh, Miles Turner is probably a, one of the more solid bigs that we don't really talk about too much. This is a fact. Um, in the league, he, he, he does his thing. Uh, My question for you is, Tyrese Halliburton is a top blank player. Tyrese Halliburton is probably a top 25 player. Uh, definitely not a top 10, not 15, maybe in that 20 to 25 range. I can see that. Uh, and then uh, for my player, uh, my play-in teams, um, I had Hawks in that seven spot, Nets in that eight spot. Uh, Magic ninth, and I had my local bum ass hometown ass Charlotte Hornets in the 10th spot. Uh, didn't see the injuries for LaMelo Ball at this point. Uh, maybe we need to question his durability. Definitely need to question his durability. We had yeah. the same nine and ten. I had the heat at eight, but we definitely had the same nine and ten. I guess we was looking for that young – like, that would have been a fun 9 and 10, I think. Like, Paolo, LaMelo, do or die yeah. game, see who rises to the occasion. Yeah, and, and the way that those two young teams are constructed, it should be a battle with Miami for the Southeast Division year in and year out. Um, but uh, the Hornets have 
underachieved to say the least. Yeah. Going through a lot of turnovers. So I um definitely dropped the ball on that one. Um don't really remember why I was so high on Brooklyn. Um I probably because they did. look solid enough to at least be a top ten team in the East. No, I you think know. I neglected the fact that KD carried them halfway there, so all they had to do was kind of just finish it last year. Well, that but even with that, that's what I'm saying. Like you would think they would have been good enough to at least been the top ten team. Yeah, you know like you like you didn't have them like four. No, I didn't have them four. <laughs> like you but... know, what I'm saying like damn, yeah, I can't be in the play in. Um. I, well, I can't speak for you. Me, I was thinking more so because I had the Nets at seven. I'm thinking what we saw from Mikael Bridges. I was thinking that that would have grew even more this year. I think uh, I think we would have took that step. But Mikael Bridges is a number three. I he, I couldn't have said it any better. He's he a number three. Up. And uh, when you ask those three. When you ask them threes to be ones, when you ask threes to be ones, that means you're asking fives to be twos, and you're asking sevens to be threes. And yeah. that puts you out of the top ten. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a fact. But they got to figure it out, man. They definitely got to figure that out. Because it seems like um, they got a lot tied into that team to go nowhere. So they might want to just start trading off people. Yeah. If I was them, I would trade off. Hey, see what you can get. People will take a lot for uh, Mikael Bridges. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a guy, like, I would say, like an OG Ananobi, where they're looking at him like he could be a, a piece that can take you over the top if you're my number three. But if you, like you say, if you're my number one or my number two, we're not going nowhere. No, no, you're going nowhere fast. You're going nowhere fast, man. But um, the damn Bulls, I, I, I think the Bulls want to play the Heat in the play-in just to knock their ass out, and they'll lay down in the first round. I think they just want they, they lick back from last year play-in. Don't see it, but <laughs> the Bulls got to be the epitome of mediocrity. They um, actually are. And, and I think since since Jordan left, no, not since Jordan, since Derrick Rose, they haven't been a top eight team or a top bottom team in the NBA. So that means they ain't been good enough to go far in the playoffs to get a top seed, but they ain't been bad enough to get a fucking lottery pick, other than Patrick Williams. But you're not, you can't get a number one pick with that. Patrick Williams was a questionable call anyway. That's why teams didn't draft on potential. Uh, he was drafted number four, and you never started a game at Florida State. That's crazy. Uh, that's, that's very crazy, but, you know. It happens. You can't really knock Chicago because they drafted well uh, over the years. They, they, pretty, they pretty much hit on just about every pick. Yeah, but they haven't – other than Derrick Rose, they haven't had a star. It's just no, they, of solid players. They haven't uh, – but, I mean, Derrick Rose is the only time they've really had, like, top five. Yeah. The, the rest of them are in spots where you – that's kind of what you draft, and you draft in that solid motherfucker. Um, yeah. Shout out to Cody Williams was drafted fourth, so, I mean – and they got to make a decision on him, right? It's about time to figure out if you're going to pay him some. It's definitely about time to figure out if you're going to pay him. And right now, if I'm Chicago, I'm probably not paying him. No. Unless you see something that, like, hey, he's still trying to figure it out. You and, know, you know, Vucevic uh, will probably be gone soon. So that'll open a lot up. Right. And now, um, you know, a lot of people were saying they made a mistake with Kobe White, but Zach Levine go down, you get a kid a little bit of playing time, and boom. White looked good. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe you 
it depends. Like this is my thing with Patrick Williams. This is this is where I go with it. If we are looking to contend, we're not going to get rid of Demar Derozan. We're going to keep fighting and keep trying to figure this thing out. Then you probably don't sign him back. But if you're looking to rebuild and we're going to get Levine out of here, we're going to get Bucevic out of here, we're just going to tear it around, tear it down, and we're going to build it around these young kids, then obviously you have to you have to bring them back. But that's that's the logical thing that I think should happen. Yeah, man, they got to uh... – yeah, they should just tear it down at this point. Like, they've been remodeling it forever. The house still fucking ugly. Yeah. yeah the house yeah. is still fucking ugly, man. Tear that shit down. Um, let DeMar DeRozan go. But I, I, but they say DeMar DeRozan really wants to stay in Chicago. Like He's not trying to move again. Well, I mean, he's he's at that point in his career where it's kind of like, man, I ain't really trying to be <laughs> moving all over the place. But, I mean, DeMar... As good as you've been, you ain't earned that right to damn go out on your own terms. So, God damn it, if we're going to trade your ass, that's just what it's going to be. Hey, you know you know what I always say about any good player in the NBA. Send him to L.A., man. Come be a Laker. Uh, we'll get to them. We, we, we will get to them. And we'll that is what, them. This is what they call a segue. So no, let's go hold up, yeah. I, before before we segue into the next thing, I want to I want to speak on this. Uh, there's no way we can lead the East without speaking on the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, they are they have to be the best chaotic team in the league. Um, you got Adrian Griffin midway through. Um, obviously, Giannis wasn't happy with Adrian Griffin's system. Um, you bring in Dame, who uh, now you guys are complaining about defense, but I don't never remember Dame ever making no all defensive teams, and you knew that before you acquired him. Yep, uh, it's looking like this is a reach. Like, I know you want to keep Giannis happy, but I think they're reaching way too much uh, to try to keep him happy. Uh, I'm not, you're not wrong in that. I can see that. But when a motherfucker bring you a chip after 50 years, you turn into yeah. Mr. Fantastic. You reach right. as far as, because, Milwaukee is the kind of town. It's not like the Lakers or Boston. They they can go a while without getting another chip, right? You know what I'm saying, especially and they and their fan base will be happy with just seeing their front office and management try shit to win another one. You know, even if it don't work, I think their front office and their management will be just happy to see it happen, like to see them try. So, um, it. It might fuck them up with winning another one. Um, I would have liked to see this team with Drew Holiday, um, maybe even with a different coach and maybe just a different strategy and have Giannis actually guard the other team best player in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. They might not – they probably didn't need these wholesale changes. Like something that small probably would have changed a lot. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But, but I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong in that. I think you're right. I think um, I seen somebody say something about Giannis. It made me think about it. It was like you know they try and make it seem like Giannis is a European that's more like Jokic or you know he don't care about stats and all that bullshit. It was like why the fuck? It's like why is Giannis usage rate up? Why is he bringing the ball up the court? Why is he doing shit that's not even really in his wheelhouse as a player? Because he cares about that shit. He might not talk about it. He might not want to look like the quote unquote LeBron kind of guy who's the GM player type. But again, the coach is fired. <laughs> he didn't play his trade. It. Hey, you might be doing it in Milwaukee, but we see you, nigga. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we for see, sure. you know, sure. so you're not wrong at that at all. But like I say, being in a place like Milwaukee, this man just brought you your first chip since Kareem. You got a minute over backwards for him, man. He earned it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, hey, if I'm Giannis, y'all want me to stay? Y'all better keep trying shit. Including keeping my bum ass brother on the roster. Yo, you want to know what's funny about that with the Nasus? And I didn't even think about it like this. But I was watching uh, a clip with Cameron and Mace that is what it is. Mm -hmm. And Cameron said something to me that made the most sense. This is how you know the Nasus ass. Because even players who ain't that good in the NBA, when they get on, when they get with their country, they balling out. The Nasus don't even ball out for Greece. No. So, no. so, so like, no. bro, like Dennis Schroeder just won the MVP for Germany. Right. He averaging like eight points in, in the NBA. Yeah. Like yeah. Daniel Theis was balling for Germany. You know what I'm saying? Kelly Olynyk looked like a fucking all NBA power forward for Canada. The Nasus is nowhere to be found for Greece. Jordan Phillips was dropping. I mean, Jordan Clarkson was dropping like 35 and 40 for the Philippines. So, like. But Jordan Clarkson, the bucket, though. He is. <laughs> but that was, just to, that was just to piggyback on your point. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, man. I, he keeping the Nasus paid. I ain't mad at him, though. Fuck that. Y'all got to pay my brother. Hey, family first. Family first. Um. But yeah, now um, let's 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 take it on over to the west. Um, I'll go first this time. Uh, All right, who you had? So I had Nuggets first, um, Sacramento, and the Lakers as the top three. And I know for damn sure that is not the uh, the three. No. Uh, right now it's Thunder. Nuggets, so you did have the Nuggets and the T Wolves. Okay, so the Nuggets are second. Um, Nuggets have, have reached that that plateau of a team who we know what we are, we know what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do what we do. If you stop it, good luck. If not, long night. Um, they don't need home court advantage, they're, they passed that point where they need the home court. Uh, we'll we'll go wherever to close it out if we need to. Uh, do you think? Do one second. Do you think the Nuggets can go on like as a team, as an organization, where the Jokic go on like a Spurs kind of run of like just pencil them in for fifty wins for like the next like seven to eight years? Absolutely, absolutely. Because you got to think. Um, you you gotta have your linchpin, right? So you got your linchpin like the Spurs had uh Jokic, that's your Tim Duncan. Um your uh Tony Parker, you got him. You got Jamal Murray. There's your Tony Parker. Um and you got Michael Porter Jr. That's probably your Genova. Um yeah. Then you just got all around solid guys like Aaron Gordon. You got uh, you got KCP who's just fucking solid. And uh, you, you got uh, Reggie Jackson coming off the bench who's been a twenty point a game scorer in the league. Yeah. Um, you got a you young guys him? like like uh, like Christian Brown and Brown. Uh, Peyton Watson and Zeke Nanji. And that's why I told you over the summer because when we had this conversation, and, you know, we, we watched them let Bruce Brown go and we watched them let Jeff Green walk. And I told you over the summer, I said, because they let those guys walk because they already had the replacements there for them. They're younger and they're probably cheaper. Oh, you for know sure. What I'm saying? So they already had it there. Um, the Nuggets can definitely go on the Spurs tight round. 
I am a huge, huge, huge Mike Malone guy. Uh, I love Mike Malone, probably one of my favorite coaches in the league right now. Yeah, I like Mike Malone. Um, I know he looking at Spo contract like, motherfucker, if I go back to back. Run it. <laughs> Y'all better back the brink, brink truck up. But Spoh yeah, that's... earned it though. Spo definitely earned it. He definitely did. I'm not saying that's Spoh. He, hey, Spo probably looked at and Mike Malone or any of these winning coaches, you know, uh, pop different because he's a GM. He write his own check. But like any of these coaches that win, like you see Steve Kerr just got this money. They always looking at Monty Williams like, you got me fucked up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They like wait, the nigga who just lost twenty six in a row. Yeah, yeah, right. y'all go ahead. Yeah, as soon as as soon as they got the game twenty six, I bet you all the coaches agents was like, yeah, go ahead. We can go ahead and start talking contract extensions, and we want we want ten or more. Yeah, you know. What so I mean? my next three was uh, Suns, T Wolves, Warriors. Um. I just – it was just something about the Suns that just wouldn't let me put them in that top three. Um, Kevin Durant is still trying to hold on to the super team shit. Bro, nobody does that shit anymore. Um, and the, the arrogance of the Suns to think that they could do this shit without a point guard. Without a point guard. <laughs> that was – Without tough. a fucking point guard. Yeah, that was just pure arrogance. Um, them and the Spurs, it's crazy. The new NBA, yeah. you, you, you know, I just, I part of me believed in the Suns. Like, I was on some shit. Like, if they finish top three, they should, but if they don't, I'm not surprised. That that was kind of the, the, the vibes I had with them, yeah. Um, T Wolves, um. Anthony Edwards is him. I was just talking to you the other morning. And I was like, man, I'm trying to figure out, you know, who's going to be my new favorite player. And I told you it's Shea, Luka, and, and Anthony Edwards. But every night, Anthony Edwards just continues to show me why I need to pick him. It's a grown-ass man. Um, <laughs> Cats are two. Um, I think he's more comfortable in that role. Yep. Um, I think you you said they still kind of need to figure it out with Rudy Gobert and and, uh, and Cat, but I, I think they I think it's figured out, man. I think uh, they I, I think they figured it out. Um, Cat gonna play in the perimeter, and Gobert gonna roam the paint. It's 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 working. I just thought yeah. it was more of an issue, and it and it does rear his head. I saw it last week against the Clippers before Cat got hurt. Or it might have been two weeks ago. When teams do have like Kawhi at the four, Cat doesn't take advantage of it on the offensive end because he's not going to put you in the post. And he can't stay in front of somebody like Kawhi or Paul George when they're putting those players at the four. And that's going to still be an issue for the for the Timberwolves. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm um, saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, my Warriors pick at the sixth spot was solely off of uh, – this was solely off of – I felt like as long as you had the big three, yeah, you know, you got a puncher's chance. But what I didn't account for was the fall off of Clay Thompson. Um, that nigga looks to be shot. <laughs> um, yeah. I told you, cuz, when they played Atlanta and DeJounte Murray blew past Clay with a jab step, I knew it was over. Because it wasn't even no move, cuz. Like, it wasn't no... Ha, 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 ha. Right. Was, yeah. Jab step right. Go left. Yeah. <laughs> not even getting ready. Not even about to put you in the blender. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just about to, got, you know. I got places to be. I got shit to do, bro. Yeah, and I, I don't got time to be fooling with you. <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, <clears throat> I didn't account for that. And I also did not account for Draymond Green auditioning to be a part of WrestleMania 40. 
<laughs> all year. <laughs> I didn't. And, and, and the Warriors have shown flashes where they are still that team that, you know, that's, I mean, let's just call it what it is. They, they've they shown flashes of the dynasty that they are. Yes. Um, however, it, Clay's washed. Draymond looks. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Um, I, I I don't like the roster. I felt like maybe they should have made a move at the deadline. They stood packed. Um, I think I think with the Warriors, you know, I think their their thought process was they were thinking kind of how your Braves think. Um, Draymond got us on a roll before the All Star break. Chris Paul will be back after the break. We don't need to make any moves because help is on the way with health. You know what I'm saying? Because when Chris Paul out there, he's great with the second unit. But the only yeah. thing that sucks is Chris Paul come back and Steph Curry gets hurt. Right. So it's like, well, damn, like we, we can never connect all the pieces to get this ball rolling. You know, so I think that's more so what it is with the Warriors. I think the Warriors was like, we'll be okay when we get everybody coming back you know gary payton the second missed a lot of time you know so they, that was more so they thought process i believe but they just traded so, off injuries. so what what is the actual four five six that we have um four five six is clippers pelicans who are playing right now and pelicans are up on um, five and kings okay so that takes me to my play-in teams, which I had Clippers. Um, this was also pre-trade for James Harden when we. This did is this. true. This is so true. So that's why I had the Clippers so low. Um, I honestly didn't think Kawhi Leonard would give a fuck about those uh, sixty-five game limit, but he has played. He played a lot. He played. He played so, a lot. So, um, you know, that was just a mistake on my part uh on that pick uh pelicans uh not surprised where they're at in reality it's just uh the zion factor um, they had to show maturity they had to prove yeah. it well i mean I, I just had to see if zion was even gonna play or if he was gonna get hurt so i felt like putting the pelicans in that eight spot was safe Nothing. Um, then I went Grizzlies. Uh, I felt like did we do this pre? Yes, it was. Was this pre Josh? Okay, so we Josh, knew, no, no, no. This was after we knew Josh was going to so be suspended. We knew he was going to be suspended. So I felt like Josh was going to. I felt like I liked the Marcus Smart move. Um, yeah. I don't think I felt like uh, Dylan Brooks should have stayed around. I felt like he was the scapegoat for a lot of their um, shit that happened, losing to the Lakers, and really it wasn't his fault. Um, not going to go down that rabbit hole about Dylan Brooks. It just felt like, you know, they should have kept him. Hey, Dylan but Brooks bring is second team all defense. Yeah, you know what I mean, you bring in the NBA, you bring somebody like that back. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're going to replace him, you replace him with Marcus Smart. Um, I, I like, I felt like that their roster was good enough to at least stay afloat until Ja got back. Um, but Ja got came back, he got hurt, and he was looking Bottom good. Too. Yeah, he was looking real good. Bottom yeah. fell out, and everybody I mean, got hurt. Marcus Smart got hurt, Bang got hurt. You knew Brandon Clark wasn't coming back. Steven Adams, it seemed like had a setback or whatever. It's I watched the, the Grizzly one game because and that shit looked like what whatever they G League team is, the hustle. Yeah. It looked all like, of them niggas. It looked like them. But I can say um a lot of times when you go through a season like the Grizzlies have had, you find some guys. Um obviously you found some with GG Jackson. Yeah. Um, He's somebody that you have to keep around. Vince Williams has been uh, solid. So, I mean, there has been light at the end of the tunnel. 
It just sucks uh, having a bad season like this. And you can tell that's why they still competing and finding ways to win games, which you don't want to give a losing coach coach of the year. But Jenkins is doing a very good job with what he has because they he, compete. He's doing a good job, but miss me with that coach of the year shit. Well, what I was going to say is you can see they still competing in games and they still trying to win games because this draft fucking sucks. Like This is the worst year to have the bottom fall out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> like any other year, you probably be you'll see the the Grizzly tanking. They out here still trying to win. They like shit. Man, and and in the ten spot, I had Utah. So as you go through that, I'm embarrassed to say the Thunder were left completely off of my ten. Damn, you had um, you did have the Thunder off. Yeah, the, the Thunder wow. completely off. I had Utah. Um, I still thought that the Thunder was maybe a year away. But when you got a legit MVP candidate in in Shea, uh Josh Giddy solid all around. Uh yeah, Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams is a dog. Chet um, fits seamlessly. Chet Chet's doing his job. Case and Wallace um, made him trade Trey Man. Yeah, like, I mean, like, there are no holes in, like, Sam Presti still got fucking great draft picks. Draft picks. <laughs> Man, you know, you know, I forgot they drafted um, DeMontis Sabonis. They did. I was just, honestly, when he was tearing AD a new one the other night, I was just sitting there thinking, like, damn, DeMontis was with the damn Thunder. <laughs> yeah. Damn, yeah. Man. Uh, they draft amazingly. They drive yeah. amazingly, man. But the play in right now are the Suns, the Mavs, the Lakers, and the Dubs, the Warriors. Oh my God, man! What more could you ask for? What <laughs> more great, could you ask it's for? It's a great play in scenario. <laughs> but I will yeah. say this: is did you not know? Like people, you probably didn't know this. As much as it looks like like the Lakers or the Warriors, not the Warriors because they weren't in the play-in last year, but they were one of the lower seeds. I think they ended up being six. They were six. The Lakers right now have a better record than they had the same time last year in their ninth. Like the everybody West got just, better. Everybody got better. Everybody you know, got that's better. what makes the West so much fun, like even um, watching the last couple of nights on TNT. Ernie's been saying, like, I'm glad we got the West this year. Like, I'm glad we got the West. I mean, um, I just think the West fits better on TNT for some reason, though. I I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. Especially, you know, it's not happening this year. You, anytime you got a chance for Chuck to go to San Antonio, it's a good, it's a good week. It's a good week in basketball. It's a good week in basketball. But for the West, I had the Nuggets at on the top. I had Lakers second, and I had the Suns, the Suns third. Yeah, you went with the all name team. <laughs> <laughs> the all name. Yeah, man. But I got to look at the date of this Suns pick. Like, I wonder if this was pre Bradley Bill. I gotta um, go. Back. I gotta go back and hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I can look. Oh, I updated it today, so it will show the updated date. Cause, do you think the Suns would be better if they would have just kept Chris Paul? I believe so. I think they would have been a lot better. But um, that was my three. Only team I got same as you, the Nuggets, and then my um three, four. I mean, my four, five, and six were the Thunder. Yes, I believe in the Thunder. <laughs> Not as much. I don't know. I don't know why how, I did. But definitely more than you did. The Clippers and the Kings. So I got two out of the three for that. Because right now it's the Clippers, Pelicans, and the Kings. And then my playing teams were the Warriors. Where's that worked out? The Pelicans. I had the Timberwolves. 
Because I just I I understand the NBA is about collecting the talent now. That's why I still had a little bit of faith in the Wolves. Just get the best players you can, and then they'll figure something out. You know, they might not get a chip, but they still we're still got enough talent to beat the bad teams. And then uh, I rounded out with the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I thought Jaw was gonna come save the day, and did he probably would have. And like for those seven games he played, he looked fucking amazing. Right. It's tough to see him get hurt. And um, I really wanted to see what Ja would have been playing so well in the league and how the league would have had to really kiss his ass. Because <laughs> right. I think Ja might have fucked around and snuck in the All Star game or some shit, you know, and, and that would have been great. Right. But you leaving the Thunder off, I'm glad this documented because cause what the fuck? Well, yeah, I, I, like I said, I just, only thing I could say is I just maybe felt like uh, they was a year away. I mean, that's, that's all I could say, honestly, like, I, it's not too much. So, right now it's Thunder and Boston, the two number one seeds. Out of those two teams, who do you think the most likely to get to the finals? Out of who the Boston Celtics and who Thunder? Um, yeah, definitely Boston. You think I so? Think, yeah, I think Boston. I I don't see the Thunder getting to the final. It's not time. It's not time, and I'll go Boston too. But I'll tell you what, I don't think neither one of those teams end up in the finals. Mm, interesting. Who you got out of the East? It's hard to say in the East. I'm I'm still leaning towards the Bucks, but I just can't trust Boston in the offense that they don't run. That's understandable. Like they still don't run the offense. And it looks good on a Wednesday night on ESPN. When a team coming in after they just played the Knicks and they just ready to get this game over with. But when you got to beat play somebody seven times in two weeks, right? They got to run more of an offense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, the Bucs have always had a problem. I mean, not the Bucs. The Celtics have always had a big problem with Giannis. Like, so- they. I guess my question to that would be if Boston doesn't get it done, does that spell the end for Joe Mazzou? For who? You know, that's always the question. I don't, I mean, I don't Only know. Only if there's a bigger there right fish now. out there. You can't just go get another guy off the bench. Like, you can't just go get Sam Cassell. Nah. No, no disrespect to Sam Cassell. But somebody need to give my boy a big shot, Sam, a job, man. Yeah, for Charlotte, sure. Charlotte. Not, Charlotte, you listening. Not the Celtics. No. You know, not 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 the Celtics. Um maybe though. I mean, they should have kept Eme, but that's a whole nother can of worms. Um sure. I don't know. I don't know who you go after. There's nobody else out there. I mean, maybe Tibbs. Tibbs going to run down the Celtics into the ground playing them up for 42 <laughs> minutes in a regular season game. The conversation nobody's having about the Knicks is Tibbs don't have a contract extension. I think he's earned it. I think so, too. I think he's but, earned uh, it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it probably would be it for Joe Missoula, but where do you go, Brad Stevens? He can't come back. He's not coming back. Uh, he's not coming back downstairs. Yeah, he he can't. Like you know, you still got you coach Jason Tatum, you coach Jalen Brown, you coach Al Horford. I'm sure they're looking at you like this already ain't work with your ass, bro. Like you got to go. Like you did the good. You you're good at what you do. You're right. good at constructing the team. Right. You know what I'm saying. So it probably would be. But they would have to really be careful with their coaching decisions. Oh, 
But yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. Um, JB Bickerstaff really found out, like, figured out something with the Cavs. Like, I don't know if you noticed, they literally stagger Evan Mobley and Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen. So at all times, you have two big twos out there. Yeah. Like, that is that's tough to deal with for 48 minutes. It is. And shout out to JB Bickerstaff. I don't think he's. Um, being mentioned for the job that he's done with the Cavs, um, to have them in the top half of the East, yeah. Um, I think your biggest question is, what do you do with Donovan Mitchell? Um, that's probably the next before the Cavs can take the next step. <clears throat> that is the biggest question that they need to address is, is Donovan Mitchell here for the long haul, or are we just buying time until the inevitable happens? If I'm Donovan Mitchell, I'm staying in Cleveland. What He's else? been trying to get to New York. Huh? What else is out there? He's trying to get to New York. For what? Just to go back to New York? Like, <laughs> honestly, if, if first of all, they can pay you the most. Right? They can max you out for the most. And look at the team. You actually have a chance to win. Yeah. Like you, yeah. like you, it, 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 I, it ain't like you over there fighting for the play in. You know what I'm saying? Like Evan Mobley is only in year two or three. What year three? Year three. Jared Allen, what he's what 25, so he hasn't even reached his prime. Garland is in what year four, five? Give or take, yeah. He hasn't even reached his prime. You literally. Here's Levert, solid. Solid. Donovan Mitchell, he needs to think long term. He can be the guy until he doesn't have to be the guy anymore and still win. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not enjoy that? As a, I, I, to quote Joe Kim, Joe Kim Noah, nobody ever wants to come vacation in Cleveland. I feel you. But, hey, man, the season over in June. You can take your ass to yeah, New York. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got to live. You ain't got to live there. Who wants to live? In them harsh winners in New York, but I understand, man. You go to the garden, man. You playing in front of celebrities each and every single night, like um, the the fad, the big market. Like I, I get all the reasons that he would leave if you're looking at if you're looking at it from that side of the spectrum. But there is that other side of the spectrum that um, that makes logical sense. Yeah. But, you know, that's you that know. grass ain't always greener. Definitely. And do you want to go play for Tia's and play 43 minutes a night? Because he, he's going to run your ass to the ground, but <laughs> So. And that's a that's – a, All right. Is, is Brunson just that much better than Darius Garland? I think so. You I think so? I do. Um Darius Garland is what we like to call a uh, hooper. You know what I'm saying? He just goes out there and he just plays basketball. Like, he's a hooper. Uh, Jalen Brunson is a fucking winner. That's a fact. And he is a dog. And uh, I would take Jalen Brunson. Um, Jalen Brunson. It was foolish of the Mavs to let him go. I understand the uh, the magnitude and the player that Kyrie Irving is. I get that. But because you know me, like I look at stuff from a totally different perspective. Um, I look at the facts. I don't get too much caught up in the names. And you know that. And I just thought that Jalen Brunson fit better with Luka Doncic. Um, this that got a I got a question to kind of push back on that. Does anybody actually fit with Luka Doncic? With his style of play, no. Because I'm gonna be honest, Kyrie's doing a lot of the same stuff Jalen Brunson was doing. Yeah, it just if yeah, Luka did all that defense, for the team. If if Luka ain't gonna play at least a little bit of defense, ain't none of this shit gonna matter. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree totally. You know, we were talking about this yesterday um, on the phone. You know, you compare Luca to James Harden. Hell, at least James Harden can say, 
I led the league in steals before. Shit. Like, at Lucas least I play some passing lanes. Lucas defense is atrocious. <laughs> but what do you say to him? I don't know. But, damn it, at some point, Luca, you got to listen to one of your coaches. You got Rick Carlisle out of here. Jason Kidd, you got to hold him accountable, man. I don't think that's going to happen. Um uh, but the Mavs are going to have to play some sort of defense if they want to be taken serious. Like, yeah, you got to the Western Conference Finals that year because Phoenix shit the bed, but um, yeah. you couldn't have thought that this was going to be a regular thing. Hey, man, Luke could probably feel like he can uh... – I think just make up stats at this point, I think. But, um, <laughs> hey, Luca, think he could just, hey, score, score, score. But well, Luca need to realize this ain't fucking Real Madrid. And this ain't Euro basket. Yeah. Like, this is the NBA. And I know that he's been on record saying, like, I fucking do this. Uh, this shit is easy over here. Yeah, the offensive part, but nigga, you need to win. Yeah. And uh Luca just does not play winning basketball. Is it exciting? Absolutely. Uh am I gonna tune in every time Luca's on TV? If I don't watch the whole game, I'm damn sure gonna take a look at it. He is must see TV, but for sure. Th- does his style equate to winning basketball? No, I don't think so. You sound like me talking about um D-Lo. Okay. You know, I always shoot you a D-Lo don't play winning basketball ticks. Right, right. And he does it. Is it? A, I got to because they the game just went off the Pelicans just beat the Clippers. Why the fuck can Zion ever get more than eight rebounds? I don't fool with Zion on the uh, parlay, man. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> with his style of play, like he would be a, a better rebounder. Well, I don't even think he was that great of a rebounder at Duke. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's go look up his one year at Duke and see what exactly his rebounding numbers was. Uh, you kind of want Zion to get out of, in space, you know what I'm saying, to run the floor. So he can't do that in that grabbing rebounds. Like, yeah. And his, hold on, let me see. In his one year at Duke, Zion Williamson averaged. Well, I probably need to look up his college. College stats. Let's see what else. Which I can't see the fire right now. But, I mean, would you looking for a double double? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am, cuz. At least a few. Shit. God damn. Hey. What's what's two rebounds a quarter, cuz? You're right. <laughs> Shit. Give me eight. Oh, man, I stand corrected. He was twenty three and nine at Duke, so I mean Come on, man. You can't give us eight in the league, man. Can't give us two a quarter. Two a damn quarter, man. I don't know. But uh, can we can we talk about AD and this year? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, man. What's interesting was I think it was maybe Monday, Tuesday morning, I was talking to you. And remember, I was like, we got a De'Aaron Fox problem. And he was like, y'all definitely do. And then I followed that up. I was like, actually, we got a fucking Sabonis problem. And you echoed what I said. Even in that conversation, I didn't realize that AD was actually 0-9 versus Sabonis. I was just going by the eye test. And just right. noticing, like, yo, Sabonis give this man problems. But I'm pretty sure AD heard that shit all day that he was 0-9 against Sabonis. Where the fuck uh, was personal pride, bro? 
Um, when you got a guy like LeBron on your team, you probably learn to block shit out like that. This is true. Um, you probably block out the fact that you owe a nine, but it's got to linger as a competitor. It's definitely got to linger in the back of your mind somewhere. Because, like, even oh. if you don't know that you're owing nine, something yeah, you like, do know. <laughs> well, something even if you don't know you're owing nine, right? You know that this man been busting your ass. That you do know. <laughs> so, like, I don't give a fuck if you know the record against a guy you know is a team sport. All this blase squase. You know, every time I play against this nigga, he busts my ass. Yeah. It has to stop. I mean, at some at some point, um, maybe you guys are meeting the playoffs. Uh, where uh, everybody currently at? Like, is there a scenario where you guys could meet, or would that have to be Western Conference Finals or? I think second round we, potentially, or I think it's some way we would be able to play them in the second round if they was to like upset the three. We upset the two, kind of how we played the Warriors last year. Where it was okay. two upsets. So I got it right here. So right now, you are the nine. They are the six. Oh, so, okay. and you guys are three games back of them. So I don't see it unless. Uh, you know, you guys get the seven seed and you beat the Nuggets in the first round, which I don't see that happening. Uh, or you move up to – or the Kings beat the Timberwolves in the first round, which I could very well see happening. That can happen. Um, that's the only way you guys will get them. So, it don't look like AD is going to get his face back till next season. Um, however – uh, I, you're going to continue to have a De'Aaron Fox problem because De'Aaron Fox showed you I bust Lonzo's ass <laughs> in high school. I bust Lonzo's ass in college. And you motherfuckers still took him over me. Hey, man, it was politics in that. There was no basketball involved. None. It couldn't have been because the proof was there. I busted this nigga's ass. Everywhere we fucking be, AAU, high school, I dropped 40 on this motherfucker. Yeah. And, you know, even my pop said, you know, my boy been busting your boy ass. <laughs> so you're going to continue to have that De'Aaron Fox problem. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell you another problem you guys are going to have, and it, it's not on a bigger scale. Of DeMontis owning AD right now, and uh, it's not on a bigger scale of y'all skipping over uh, uh, De'Aaron Fox. You got Malik Monk problem too because you just let him go. Well, the thing about uh, yeah, what Malik Monk it was that was kind of a weird NBA contract rule situation. Like, we couldn't offer him the same amount of money that the Kings could. Okay. So that wasn't really the Lakers' fault. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Gotcha. That, yeah, that was the weird shit. We can only offer him, like, three or four million, and outside teams could offer them more. Fucking stupid. Well, um, as I said before, like, you guys have got to figure some things out. Um. Because I, there is a, looking at the four teams in the play, and there is a legit shot that y'all may not make it. Yeah, yeah, and um, the thing I don't like about the Lakers, first of all, having three days off and playing the Kings coming off a of back to back and having less energy was just goes back to a Darvin Ham situation. Um, that's all to me. That's coaching like a motherfucker, man. You gotta have your boards ready. Um, I don't like, I don't like that when LeBron played well and he in year 21 is throwing fucking rose petals at his feet 
And then when he playing like really lazy or like conservative or however the fuck you want to look at it. Well, you're year 21, what you expect? Get the fuck out of here. Like yeah. you either out here, you ain't nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um I don't like the way that it seems like he tries to turn the switch on. You know what I'm saying? Um it's it looks good. It's it's almost like that trick play that the coach calls in the NFL. When that yeah. shit works, you look great. When that shit don't work, you're the dumbest fucking coach in the world. Absolutely. And you know, when LeBron going off against the Clippers, he hitting seven threes in the fourth or whatever. It looks amazing. But then you have a game like Wednesday and you can't turn it on or get the stops to make it look good in a win. Damn, Ron, we needed more than six in the first half, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be. Right. Go. All right. Look, this is one of my more favorite times of the year, man. Like we get ready to get, we're coming up on playoff basketball. Um, opening days right around the corner. Um, weeks, got, weeks got March Madness, which I've enjoyed these conference tournaments. Shout out to them Hills, man. We need to get that number one seat. And uh, it's just a wonderful time for sports right now, man. It's a great time to be a fan. It's a great time to be a fan, especially to be a sports fan like us, right, that likes – more than just a typical basketball, football, like you mentioned, opening day. Um, like when you was, <laughs> who was talking earlier, the Masters are even coming. Oh, yeah, out. we got the Masters rolling around the corner. You know what I'm saying? You got playoff hockey around the corner. Playoff hockey uh, should be. Uh, Kentucky yeah, Derby should be. Kentucky Derby should be coming up here soon. Yeah, MLS started. Yeah, I um, mean. There's a lot going on, man. Brick yard four hundred will probably be sometime in there too. So yeah. <laughs> that's a fucking fact, man. That's a fucking <laughs> fact. But uh that's go that's great. And there you go, another segue. A segue to let people know we will be giving y'all information, conversation, content on all that shit. For sure, man. Opening sure. days coming up. Going to have a lot of baseball talk. I know y'all don't get baseball talk from a lot of these podcasts. A lot of these sports gurus won't even give you baseball talk. We got you. You're going to get major baseball. Also, breaking news just came to my phone. We got that number one seed pretty much locked up because Oregon did come from behind, beat Arizona 67-59. Oh, yeah, it's over. So let's it's get over. Arizona out of here. I know they're going to probably stick us out there and make Arizona the two seed because they want that Caleb Love North Carolina matchup. That's fine. We bust their ass. But uh, a team, Arizona was the last team past the Midwest to win a national championship, and that was in 1997. Really? Yes. So we've gone almost 30 years without a team past the Midwest, like Kansas, that Midwest line at Kansas, Illinois, Oklahoma, Damn. that no team, fun fact, and you UCLA. Got there. what the fuck? Yeah, yeah the UCLA, they, they haven't gotten it. Uh, 1997 was the last time a team past the Midwest has won a national championship. So when you guys are out there, you're doing your bracket, if they're west of the Midwest, Kansas, don't pick them. Don't pick them. Leave them don't in the Sweet 16. Them. Leave them in the Sweet 16. Hell, you might could even get them out of here in the first round. Just kind of depends. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it is just uh, – we should get that number one seed. But, again, like I say, man, a lot of stuff we're going to talk about on here. Definitely big, big-time baseball. Huge, huge baseball fans here. Uh, we may football touch on a little. Is all year. Football is all year. We may, hell, we may just depend, you know, briefly touch on, um, you know, Stanley Cup playoffs, um, any major MLS moves. Just, I mean, just anything sports related. Like, you know, if there's a, a 
somebody defecting over to Leah from PGA. We we own it. But aren't they supposed to be combining that together? That's what I heard, but I don't I don't know. P- I think the PGA is too stubborn to do that. Yeah. But you better it. take these fucking Saudis money. I was about to say them Saudis got big bank, man, and clearly money talk bullshit wall. You see Phil Mickelson said, fuck y'all. Yeah, for sure. I'm about it there. All right, cuz we're gonna wrap this episode up. Anything you wanna say to the people? Man, listen, man. Just be on the lookout for this content, man. Like I I know I've said this in previous episodes, but now y'all got faces with these voices. Um, we're gonna do a better job of just putting out more and more content. Uh like I said, it's basketball season. Look, people, four and twenty one. Four we're gonna, we gonna get into basketball stories with cuz too. We're gonna yeah. make that a segment. Yeah, man. Uh yeah, it, Hi, look, man. Shout out to Jeff T, man. Mm-hmm. This dude's hilarious, and he's got so many damn basketball stories. I felt like we need to have story time with Cuz as well. There we so, go. There we so, go. Yeah. Be on the lookout for that, man. Other than that, man, everybody, you know, just stay blessed, stay safe, man. And, you know, till next time, man. Till next time. Hey, man. Y'all already know how I feel. I appreciate y'all listening, taking the time to watch um, Talking Game. It's your host. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, that subscribe. Damn, I really feel like a YouTuber right now. Hit that like and subscribe. I make sure y'all share that motherfucker. Hey, man, you know we'll be back Thursday next week more than likely, but we definitely will be back next week. We're going to keep it coming for y'all guys. Peace. Peace.